Good morning. It's, uh, it's really an honor to be here to share uh, some of my journey as a, as a family doctor uh, through 25 years. So I am a family doctor. I'm also a chief innovation officer at TELUS Health. Um, I want to go back 25 years ago when my story as a doctor began. And I, when I first finished my training, I went out and did locums. I filled in for other doctors, went around the province, uh, got to kind of step into all these different practices. At that time, what struck me was we spent so much money uh, gathering information that we then put in these paper charts with illegible handwriting. We did nothing with that information. So being young and naive, uh, I bought a computer. I actually hadn't even used a computer to that point. That was that long ago. Uh, bought a computer, bought a medical practice, one of the last guys in BC to actually buy a medical practice. Um, and started building some software. And the software uh, began to work for our practice, and it was pretty good. Uh, and then we started to have other practices use it. Um, and the software became a company. Uh, and the company gradually became successful. Uh, it wasn't a short journey, uh, but it was a clear vision. And the clear vision was turn information into better health outcomes. So over 20 years, uh, 20 years of my EMR journey, um, we got to the place where we became successful as a company. We got doctors using software. Uh, and, you know, TELUS eventually acquired my company. I then came with Intellus and I bought five other companies. We got to the place where we got half the doctors in the country using our software, but more importantly, we got over 90% of doctors in the country actually using computers. Um, so I thought, you know, better medical care from better, you know, what do you call better health? Uh, and we get better medical care from turning information to better health outcomes. But, you know, I have to say, some of my faith in this was shaken a little bit. And not shaken in terms of that that, that wasn't a worthwhile thing to do but shaken in terms of, was I putting my efforts in the right place? Um, and so I had a patient, Linda, 58-year-old woman, 12 medications. She's got diabetes, she's got high blood pressure, she's got high cholesterol, she's got heart disease. Linda's doing everything we ask. She's taking her medications, she's testing her blood, she's showing up at the lab, she's showing up for her doctor's appointments. And in my 10 minutes with her, and, and unfortunately that's what you have, and I was just filling in at the clinic, um, my 10 minutes with her, you know, I, I, I looked at her and I saw she was, she was overweight. And so I asked her about her nutrition. And she said, well, she'd gone to the diabetic daycare center and she had a nutritionist there. It didn't make sense to her. She could not apply what she heard there into her life. So she didn't do anything. She kept doing the same things. I asked her about exercise and she pointed to her knee and she said, my knee hurts. I can't exercise. At this point, it's about eight minutes into the, the exam and I'm like, I'm kind of stuck here because what she needs is a Formula One team around her to help her with her behaviors, right? She needs to get unstuck. What I'm going to do in the remaining two minutes, though, is I'm going to increase her medication, right? And so I thought about it. It's crazy, right? We will be there as a healthcare system when she needs a bypass. We will be there as a healthcare system if she needs an amputation. We're not there for her to help her with her behaviors. So I started thinking a lot about health and where, you know, the definitions of health. Um, and you go back, and there, there's some great definitions. And I actually went back, you know, 1948, World Health Organization, uh, and you look at this broad definition of health, state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease. Um, I certainly wasn't practicing with that definition of health. Um, so it got me thinking, you know, what determines health? Where, where, where do good health outcomes come from? You know, is it the medical care? And I have to say, you know, a degree of humbleness, no. <laughs> you know, uh, the, the, the 10 minutes that I'm spending with these patients, I don't think I'm actually contributing that much to her good health. Was it the social circumstances? Yeah, definitely there was a component there. Environment? Absolutely. Behaviors? Definitely. And then finally, genetics. You know, what, what determines health? And so fortunately, I didn't have to go do primary research on this. This is something we've actually known for a while. There's really good information on this. Uh, lots of people have looked at this. And when you look at it, this, this actually ranked true. Yeah, 11%. The medical care you get contributes about 11% to, to your health outcomes. Social circumstances is greater, 23%. Yeah, that kind of made sense too. Physical environment, around 7%. Uh, 
Behaviors, 38%. This really started to resonate. This is something that I thought, you know, this is, this is where it's at. Uh, and then this last component, the genetics and the biology, 23%. And so when you look at this, and you start to put these patterns together, where these determinants come from, it's interesting. You start to see three domains. And when you look at the three domains, you can, you can start to break them up into, into groups and patterns. And so the first one, you know, around social circumstances, I think often relates to population health, public health. Um, and it's, you know, it's things that set our policy, our regulation. The second area, I call it professional health. This is where you, you delegate your health care decisions in some respects to your doctor. Um, and that's where, where I practice it. And there's absolutely a need for this. Um, but when you look in the overall determinants, it's, it's actually relatively small. Upstream from that, though, is this box. And when you start to break out this box, it's really fascinating. Because 68% of the healthcare outcomes, the determinants of health, come from this box. And really what we have here is the interplay of your environment your behaviors, and your genetics. And we see that manifested uh, in your system's biology, and we see that manifested by certain risk factors that we can actually measure. So this is intriguing. You know, I'm a technologist, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, I'm fascinated about the technology. We have the technology now to actually see inside of this box. We have the technology to understand what's going on there and, and actually help people determine what they need to do. And to, to see whether this is real, I just want to kind of bring this home. It's a small example. Well, not really a small example. It's the top four causes of death in Canada. If you look at the top four, it accounts for 75% of our deaths. And when you look at this and you start to, to factor in the lifestyle components of it, the behaviors, you start to see what, 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 we're, what we're talking about here. So the first thing, at a disease level, we, we call these things separate things. So we call it cancer, we call it diabetes, we call it Alzheimer's disease. And they're separate diagnoses. But if we start to dig down at the biological systems, we start to see that the system disruption have similarities. So inflammation, insulin resistance, oxidative stress, dyslipidemia, um, you know, metabolic dysfunction, we start to see that across all of these things. And in fact, for any of those big four, by the time you get a diagnosis, the underlying condition has probably been going on for 20 plus years. So we can start to see that before it develops. And then when you start to dig deeper and you start to look at the behaviors and the interactions of these behaviors on these systems, not necessarily to the disease, but at the system level, it starts to make some more sense. And if you factor in the environment and the genetics, I believe we're in a place where we can start to get a whole picture. And so, I call this personal health, others call it scientific wellness, um, but really the promise here is that we can prevent and reverse disease um, on one hand, or optimize health on another hand. And, and this is where my practice is heading. So I've got a new practice uh, out in White Rock called Wellness Garage, um, and it's all about precision health tune-ups. And, and really the idea is that you, you have to get in and you have to figure this out, and it's really up to you. But what we do, is we leverage the latest technology. Uh, we assess risk across 50 plus diseases, uh, across you know, 16 core biological systems. We look across 21 different health categories. So we take a big look, right? So we look at, you know, so first of all, as a doctor, we can kind of figure out the disease part, but then we try to look underneath and we try to figure out where you are at the system level. Um, and, and the goal here is actually to create this personalized action plan for you. And so we leveraged some great technology. So uh, Rob Fraser, uh, CEO of Molecular U, spoke last year. Um, and I'm really, really honored to, to serve as the Chief Medical Officer for Molecular U. Um, we do kind of the most comprehensive molecular profile that you, that's in market today. So we do genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, microbiome. Um, we basically look inside you, you at the molecular level. I combine that with physiological assessments, uh, super important to understand where you are in terms of strength, where you are in terms of cardiovascular fitness, in order to be able to help you with a prescription around exercise. Um, we look at body composition, we can learn a whole lot just understanding, you know, what is your bone density, what is your lean muscle mass, uh, what is your fat percentage. We do functional movement assessments. 
Um, and this is something that, you know, as you age, your ability to move in your environment is incredibly important. And without that, um, you, you won't have the quality of life. Uh, and of course, we do nutritional assessment because food, food comes down as probably the most important behavior. And so we put it all together in this precision health tune-up. It's really an action plan. Um, and so we, we create a plan, we do the comprehensive assessment, we create the plan, the plan's for you, it's about your goals, what you want to do. Um, and then you go do it, and we help you, and we coach you, and we give you, you, give you feedback, and we design behaviors. Um, we do, use digital tools to track, uh, and then we make adjustments. <clears throat> and for any of the manufacturing type people in the audience, you can kind of see this is a plan, do, check, adjust. PDCA, it's a Deming cycle. It's how you get quality in manufacturing. Um, and I think in our behaviors, it's no different. And we take some goals and we try to, try to work through. And the core behaviors, it's really important to think about this. So, so you know, our core behaviors, uh, you know, food and nutrition, uh, exercise, stress mindfulness, sleep, relationships, and purpose. And I call them core behaviors because any one of these things, like a pillar, a foundational pillar, if you knock one down, everything starts to crash down around it. And so you've got to get in and you've got to understand holistically what's going on. And we prioritize because you can't change everything at once. So you've got to, you've got to set priorities. Um, and we look at each behavior and we look for habits and we look at paths that we want to get people on. And so that's, we design that and we use behavior design and we're very intentional about how we do you know, what we do at what points. Uh, and we, we do all that to really get you to a place where you can take control of your health. And one of the things I'm finding with this, which is really interesting, is you know, I come from this bottom part, right? So you look at it, medicine. I come from the treatment. I come from, you know, that's what my job has always been. It's like, I diagnose, I treat, diagnose and treat. Um, and you start to look at wellness and you see this overlap around prevention. But prevention is still very disease oriented. We're still talking about diseases. Um, and people are inter more interested in well-being. In fact, people are more interested in well-being and then you move up into optimization. Uh, and many people in this audience would certainly be interested in performance. And as I've gone down this journey and, and begun to look at this from a behavioral perspective, you start to see the richness of just you know, how humans interact with their health. Um, and it's much, much more than disease. You know, the promise of all this, I think, is, is that you know, with this approach, I think we can prevent and reverse disease. I think we can use scientific wellness to achieve vital longevity. I think we can use lifestyle medicine programs to optimize your health. And then medical coaching to actually increase performance. But I was talking about this with my daughter. She's 13. She said, Dad, this stuff's way too complicated. Come on. Isn't it all just eat, move, sleep, chill, love, follow your bliss, repeat? So I'll leave you with that today because I think that's all you need to do every day. Enjoy. Enjoy.